25 at it. What's it at right now? 25. <laughs> What's up guys? We're ready today. We got a Honda, our favorite. Anyways, today we got an EG VTEC. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have any VTEC today. What motor is this? This is a. Uh, what is it? Okay, so it's a LS motor. It's got a CSS block. What compression pistons? No idea. No idea. So turbo pistons, I'm guessing. Around like eight, eight, nine. Huh? Nippon pistons. Okay, so usually those are like. 10 and a half, depending on which ones they got. Brian Crowler, Rewind Cams. This is a China 35R. Anyways, somebody reworked the turbo, but they used to have these MTA turbos online that I used to run back in the day. This looks like a 35R frame. 2200cc injectors and um, nice radiator. Let's see, we're gonna throw on the dyno today. We're gonna be running boost bike gear and see how she does. There's no VTEC. The only um, limiting factor I see are the stock fuel lines. They're not really efficient. What's the smoke? smoke? Wait, is this the feed for the turbo? Yeah. Oh crap. I didn't even look at that. Yeah, it's gonna blow your turbo. Oh. Because oil is supposed to be uh, draining out of this thing. So you're feeding oil. Well, there's no gravity. This is gravity drain, right? So oil is gonna sit in there. It's gonna pile it up. And this is gonna be throwing a lot of oil in it. I'm guessing this is why you have a little bit of oil residual here. No, that was from the Oh, you over, spilled it? Okay. There's no way to clock this down more. Okay. We'll see, maybe not run it too much on the dyno, but um, yeah, ideally like you want at least a uh, 15, 15 degree max orientation on this because if you have the turbo lane, like the feed line like that, oil can't drain. It needs to be at least at that angle. So it just free drains out of it. So it's gonna build up a lot of pressure and it's gonna start um, start leaking through this. It puts pressure on the seal of the turbo. It's gonna start leaking oil into your exhaust housing. Then you'll start smoking quite a bit. And then eventually you mess up that seal and then you just turbo is done over time. Let's get on dyno first and we'll figure it out. You know what part plate you have in here? In the MDK. Like what hit range? No idea. Yeah, well, we'll take one out we get and then I'll gap one out for you needed. This is putting a little <laughs> Rico. And that was just from breaking it in. Yeah. And moving it around. Sevens. Yeah, the heart. You need a colder spark plug, so these are sevens. You need an eight for this power level. But this will do for the dyno. So we need to go ahead and clean these and gap them. Make sure if you got a turbo car, we're going to put this down at the bottom. Spark plugs. Uh, B series, if you're running anywhere between 300 to about 600, 650 to the wheels on ethanol, you could run an 8 spark plug. That's a heat range 8. Uh, gap them down to 20. Just to, 20 is a little excessive, but 20 will get you up to about 850, 900 to the wheels. And then if you're running anything over 650 to the wheels, um, on the 85, I'll go with the 7 spark plug. I mean, with the 9 spark plug, and then anything over a thousand, obviously, I'd run the 11 spark plug. So, yeah, all these are kind of fouled out. So, we'll gap these down to 20, uh, clean them up, and we'll continue tuning. Mm. That's roughly like 20 ish, not 20. All right, cool. Here, this one's done. that it's 
hot, but there's no pressure and these are all cold. Your gauge in the, um, the ECU is saying it's 140, but the gauge is saying that it's past Oh no, the gauge on the dash is not accurate. Oh. Party time. <laughs> Still saying 145, but after steady state, I'm part throttle tuning right now, and it's saying the temperature's still staying 145. Like, can't be. Was this fan on earlier? Uh, I don't know. It, it will turn on when the thermal is on. Okay. We'll check it out right now. These coils, see how that, these are going to pop off on boost. It's going to misfire, but I think I have a cover somewhere. We should need to put a cover for now. Try to get him down. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of steady state. So I was holding a specific RPM and then tuning every load point. And after that, we'll start doing the full throttle stuff. What's the spring on the wastegate, do you know? Because right there it made 20 pounds. Oh, what the hell? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is all wrong. Hold on. Never mind, I found your shoe. Why is this off? Oh, this came off. That's not good. See that? Yeah, you see how like that? This, this is the wrong vacuum line. This is not high temp stuff. It's very brittle. It'll break. So ideally, this will work, I guess, for the dyno, but port one, port two, just make sure. Okay, another way you can test your waste gate if it's good, you can blow on this. So, if you can blow through it, bad sign. If you can't blow through it, that's good. So if you can blow through it, either you didn't plug one of the side holes on the waste gate, or uh, the diaphragm inside is leaking, it's like a balloon. If it has a hole in it, it'll never blow up. Same process goes with the diaphragm. So do I have a bad waste gate? No, I couldn't blow through it. What happened is this came off when I boosted, and then now there's no pressure going to the wastegate, so the diaphragm inside the wastegate sees no pressure, so it's not going to blow up. So pressure is like same, the diaphragm literally works like a balloon, like air pressure goes in there, and then it'll blow up. Once it blows up, let's say spring pressure is 10 <coughs> psi, once it gets to 10 psi, it'll overpower the spring pressure and open up the wastegate and dump all the exhaust gases out. And then with this, on high boost side, we're going to lie to it. So we're going to take the pressure from the top and send it to the bottom. I mean, from the bottom to the top to make all the boost that we can. So let's put some zip ties on these and we'll be good to go. a little bit of time trying to figure out the coolant temperature sensor it kept reading at 138 sometimes it read 150 sometimes 160 so it kept going into coolant temp enrichment tables so i had to try to figure that out i came to the conclusion that the coolant temperature sensor is wrong so i'm just going to lock it here at 171 he needs to replace that temperature sensor otherwise when the car is cold she ain't going to want to start and when it's warm if the temperature keeps bouncing around she's not going to want to run right so a new coolant temperature sensor will fix that. Right now we just made 355. She is actually creeping on boost at 14 pounds. I'm gonna give it a little bit more fuel and we should be good to go. Yeah, so that temperature sensor right there was um, throwing me off because it would go rich lean, it would go rich lean because it would go um, coolant temp would say that it was hot and then it would say cold even the full throttle is alternating. So I disabled the coolant temperature and I locked it at 171, but you need to replace that. Because okay. yeah, ECU, so when the car is cold, the ECU needs to know that it's cold. Uh -huh. That way it'll fire up and stuff like that. So it made 355 right now, 14. 
and it's gonna keep going? I hope so. <laughs> Not as she will. What class do you have? Stage two, I think. That shit did not like. Spinning? Yeah. 22 pounds, it did not like that. It's spinning? Oh yeah. That shit shot up the rev limiter right away. It was a little spicy. Oh, but this shit's not broken in, huh? Huh? The clutch's not broken in? No. Oh, I might need to break it in. But she was spicy. That was 22 pounds. Three se uh, 275 torque. How much power can this um, clutch handle? What? How much power can this clutch handle? You see that power right there? You can look at the graph. So you can see that gray graph here. And then right now I it up. So it picked up like, easy and above. Boost got a 25, so the boost controller is super sensitive. So I gotta adjust the frequency on it. All right. So it's at 25 right now with 400. Well, I didn't rev it all the way. It was only at 6,000 RPM. Oh shit! So imagine. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. What the fuck happened? Oh, no wonder. Wait, what? How the fuck did she open up? Look at that. Uh, no wonder my boost control. <laughs> yeah, it popped off on the turbo side. So that's why those stupid things not working. Always replaced? Yeah. Let me fix it. I'm not happy about those coils. I'm surprised it's not actually misfiring. Alright, so I can't, I can't seem to control the booth. There's something going on with that solenoid. I hope it's not a 24 valve volt solenoid. So I'm gonna try a couple more things. Well, I tried messing with the frequency and then reversing the polarity and all that. It's still making the same thing. It just wants to boost all the boost. It's either low boost or high boost. I can't pulse the solenoid in between. That's good, but why can't I control it? I can't control the boost right now, so I'm trying to... Oh, motherfucker! That's why. I thought I checked it in the beginning. Oh, you see that? That's all air pressure that was trapped in here. I thought I checked it. I thought it said one right there. This will work, I guess, for the dyno, but... Port one, port two, make sure. Damn it, it's like the first thing I always do is I check those things, but... I thought I checked it in the beginning. Port one, port two, make sure. What is that? This is the boost solenoid. This is right here is supposed to channel air pressure. So what happens is this is normally always closed. So if I take this out here, it's another way you can actually check. So if I blow through here, see you can't blow through it. But this one, if you blow through this one, you can blow through it and it come out it comes out of here. So what happens is once I start energizing the solenoid, it'll start channeling air pressure through here and go to the top of the wastegate. This one goes to the bottom to open it, to the top to close it to make all the boost. So watch the difference now. Now it's going to have full control. Yeah, I just wasted like 30 minutes. So there's stuff in there? Yeah, I'm telling you. This is all the oil, you see that? You cannot run the turbo like that. You got to clock it. That orientation needs to be... Uh, 10 to 15 degrees max 
because you're thinking about gravity doesn't go down like that. Gravity needs to go straight down or some type of a curvature. That has barely any curves. Basically, clock all you need to do, the, the, yeah, just clock the turbo, everything else is good. So we've, we got the spark plugs. We, uh, right now the, I just rerouted. I don't know, I literally checked it from the beginning and I was like, okay, that's one and that's two. That's one, that's two, I didn't even, <laughs> should have like fucking checked it. Now she will work. So the wastegate spring is actually 7 psi, it just uh, the orientation on the boost controller was hooked up wrong and that's why I'm like why is she creeping and why is she not responding to the right amount of duty cycle. So now we are going to change it and a uh, couple pulls, she should be done. I should have checked that from, I checked it, I just, it was kind of dark and I thought it said 1 on that port. Now, fix the boost controller issue. Now we are, um, this popped off on the blow off valve. Blow off valve has a similar thing. It's got a diaphragm in there and uh, vacuum opens it and boost closes the diaphragm. So this one, the boost line came off. So the blow off valve was actually opening up on spring pressure and it was bleeding boost here. And that's why you saw it all flopping around on boost because this was probably was blowing it all out. So now, mm. now we should make boost for the third time. Because the spring pressure is low, it's like an 8 pound spring, it's going to have a hard time making past 20 pounds of boots. Ideally you can only make about 2 to 3 times the spring pressure with the wastegate. So if you got a three, traditional 3 port uh, boost controller you can only make about 2.5 to 3 uh, times the spring pressure depending on how much back pressure you have. Because he doesn't have a tubular manifold, um, he's got a log style manifold, it's going to have quite a bit of back pressure. So uh, right now at 70% um, uh, tube cycle on the solenoid, we're only making about 20 pounds of boost. So right now, that's pretty much maxed out. That was uh, 440 on, uh, I think I saw 21 pounds. Yeah, 21.8 and uh, injector duty is fucking beautiful. 41% so we can make 800 plus horsepower with this fuel system. 440, the graph looks really good. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I can't make any more boost. So I'm 84% uh, wastegate duty. The spring pressure on the wastegate is too soft. You need to put like a 12 pound or a 14 pounds because the manifold that you have is a tubular manifold. I mean, it's a log style manifold, so it's going to have a lot of back pressure. But you can see your graph, your graph looks just like your fuel map. And that's how it's supposed to look when the motor is breathing right. Oh uh, shit. See, 87 on the. Let me see, how can I cheat this? Dude, I'm surprised this thing's not misfiring. So now I can control boost, everything else good. This motor is actually very happy. There's no coolant pressure here. Was she smoking at all in the back or no? No? Good. Turbo has a little bit of oil, but I think just clocking it will fix that. Let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. If I can put a nitrous jet right here. Is there anything? Huh? No, that shouldn't be a loose leak. I don't think so. It has no vacuum there. Otherwise, the idle would be like super high. I don't think that's a boost leak.
47, 23 PSI, but I can't get any more out of it. 22 pounds making 447, but that's maxed out. So I'm gonna try to do like one more, but that's it. We need, we need to change the wastegate spring and then uh, we can turn it up. It'll make the 500 plus all day. All right, so we're gonna leave here. Uh, 447, um, 22 and a half, almost 23 PSI. Uh, we're gonna leave the tune here because the wastegate spring is maxed out. He's gonna change the wastegate spring. He also needs to change the coolant temperature sensor and um, a couple small things. And then he'll be back. And uh, this thing right around like 25 pounds of boost should make um, the 500 that he's looking for. But uh, I tried messing around with a uh, pinch in the wastegate line on the bottom, but I can't. You, you have to put a steady airflow to the bottom of the wastegate and uh, if I had like a nitrous pill it would work perfect which I've done that on a, a multiple cars but didn't have that today so and he's local anyway so we'll be able to turn this thing up anytime we want but shout out to Lozano uh, for building the engine we just beat the crap out of it on the dyno zero issues and that's how it should be uh, broke it in for the first part when I was doing the drivability tuning holding a steady state specific RPMs so now we're just going to do the launch control, boost by gear, and he's on his way. Alright guys, so graph looks beautiful. We got 447 to the wheels. That's really good for a uh, non VTEC setup, 22-23 PSI. Um, we ran out of spring pressure there. We tried to do a couple things, but anyways, we're going to leave it there for now. Graph looks beautiful. Right. Can show your case graph now. We set the launch control, we set the boost by gear, and now he's going to go and um, take it to Mexico and do a couple pulls. Let's see how she runs. We're out. Yeah, dude.